Let's create a Lego explosion today. Simply put down a polygonal sphere. Then I will use the Pyro FX self tool to create the fireball. Then let's move up to the object level. We name the sphere object to be our source object. Then I will create a new geometry node. Name it Lego Explosion. Because today our focus is to create the Lego explosion from the Pyro simulation. So I will leave everything as default. I will cache the Pyro simulation. Let's just save out 120 frames to the disk. But we need to save our scene file first. So I will save it to my documents Lego explosion folder and I will just save the file there then I will save out the simulation to disk the caching is done Let's go to our Lego Explosion Geometry. Uh, go inside there, and there's a file node. Let's browse to the cache we just created and load it into our file node. Okay, then I can scrub the timeline. I can see the simulation. Let me turn off the original simulation display and focus on our uh, simulation cache it in from the file node. Basically, next, I'm going to create points based on the density and color the points according to temperature. Let me drop down a volume bound node to create the bounding box for the input geometry volume. Then I put down a point from volume node to create a point from the bounding box. But the default separation is too low. I will increase to 2.5. And now if I scrub the timeline, you can see that the points will be generated just within the bounding box. Now I need to get the attributes from the volume and apply them to the points generated just now. I will use the attribute from volume node. Uh, first of all, I don't need all of these points, so I will try to get the density attribute from the volume and use that attribute to delete the points the points that I don't need. Again I drop down a delete node and change the entity to from primitives to points. Then I will delete by expression at cd.r uh, smaller than 0 0.1 for example. Now let's see if these points are the ones that we want to keep. So I go back to the original simulation and turn down the pyro cache and compare it with our points. 
so in the viewport you can see that yes the points generated are within the scope of the simulation okay that's good let's turn off the simulation and go back to our lego explosion geometry let's put, do the usual uh, copy two points magic create a box and copy it to the points yeah so we get this apparently the boxes are bigger than the point separation uh, we need to change this value or rather change the size of the box to make them uh, not to overlap with each other we can link the point separation to the size of the box so that we don't need to go two places to change the values so first let's copy the parameter then we go to the box and paste the relative references so now they are linked now if I change the point separation to 0 0.2 so the box size will also change accordingly then if I change to 0 0.3 7 sorry then the box size will also change and let's keep it 0 0.3 looks good to me and now let's work on the colors I will use the same attribute from volume node here Uh, the but I'm going to use the temperature volume field yeah and map it to color oh yeah but uh, we need to connect the volume our file volume to this node So the network looks like this. The attribute from volume node allow me to map the input temperature to color through a ramp. So I'm, I will turn on the map volume to vector and change the color ramp to the color I want. For example, at the center will be yellow and the outer flame will be red color. So now you can see the points are colored accordingly, according to the ramp color. And we can see that the boxes copied to the points we also get the color from the points and uh, you can take the color according to your needs The modeling is done. Let's look at the lighting, shading, and rendering. I usually put down a environment light just for quick lighting. Then I will control and click on the shelf camera tool to create a camera and position it.
Then let's have a test render with our camera one. Go to render view. Switch camera to camera one and hit render. Okay, the render is pretty fast. And I would like to change the look again to have a little bit more smoke on the outside. So I shift the black to the right. And let's create a basic shader for our geometry. So I will drop down a classic shader and name it a Lego Explosion Shader. Oh, and uh, let me go back to object level to assign this shader to our geometry. I will drop down a material node. And link the shader we just created here. Render again with the new shader. The render is done, uh, but I think the inside flame should be hotter than the outside, so I decided to have some emission. So I turn down the emission. Yeah, a what? Uh, extremely hot. And here I going to use the color. Um as the emission color as well. So I expand the surface portion and link the point color to the emission color. So I need to find the emission color here, yes, and connect it to the point color. Attribute. And I need to change the data type of the color from float to color. Uh, but still too bright, so I will lower the uh, emission intensity and also the diffuse intensity because I want it to rely on emission heavily and yeah I will change just a little bit the emission intensity and also the diffuse intensity make it more balanced and um, I'm quite happy with the result. So I'm going to the out uh, outputs context to create mantra node for the final rendering. Oh, uh, for the mantra node, I would like to have physically based rendering as my rendering engine. And I will go to the render view to have a test render using Mantra 1 as my renderer and Camera 1 as my camera. And if, if everything goes well, then I will uh, start the final sequence rendering. And yeah, uh, 
I will set frame range to 120 and uh, have the final render. That's all for this quick tutorial. Hope you like it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.